Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on upper and lower bounds. So in this video we'll just cover the key skill of finding the upper and lower bounds. Uh, so you can think of these as the maximum and minimum values that round to a given number. So here in this example we have 57.7 has been rounded to one decimal place. We have to work out the upper and lower bounds or the error interval of this value. So uh, we'll start out then by just considering some number x. Let's say that x was a number that was two decimal places. And uh, this has been rounded to one decimal place, uh, to 57.7. That's one decimal place. So there's a range of values that x could have been, and we want to find what these are. Uh, so there's a maximum and a minimum value that round to 57.7. And these are known as the upper and lower bounds. Uh, so when we have one decimal place, uh, we're going up in increments of 0 0.1 up or down. So we have 0 0.1 and uh, to find the range of values that x can take we need to divide this value of 0 0.1 by 2. We half this uh, increment and that gives us 0 0.05. And now the way we find the upper and lower bounds, uh, let's do the lower bound first. Uh, so we take our value of 57.7 and we subtract uh, half the increment of the one decimal place we subtract the value of 0 0.05, that gives us 57.65. So this is the lowest value that rounds to 57.7. Uh, so this is the lowest two decimal place value. Okay, and then we have uh, the upper bound, and the way we find that is much the same. We have 57.7, we add 0 0.05 this time, that gives us 57.75. So our lower bound is 57.65 and our upper bound is 57.75. The last thing we'll do then is we'll write this as an error interval. And there's one thing you have to consider with error intervals uh, and that's the uh, signs of the inequalities. So uh, let's go back to our number x. So we can write it as an interval of x falling between the values of uh, 57.65 so let's just consider this value for a second. Uh, if we round this to, two, uh, to one decimal place, we're going to get 57.7. Uh, so we can say that x is less than or equal to 57.65. And then for our, for our upper bound, we have 57.75. But if we round this to one decimal place, we're going to get, get, uh, get 57.8. Uh, so we have to leave this as a strict inequality, not an inclusive inequality like we had for the lower bound. So that's all there is to it really. If we move on and have a look at another skill, it's called truncation. Uh, so in this example, what is 9.876 truncated to one decimal place? Now truncation is quite literally just chopping off uh, part of the number. So in this case, we're truncating to one decimal place. Uh, so we, our cutoff point is after the first decimal place. So that's here. So anything after uh, the first decimal place, we ignore. We don't care about that. So uh, to one decimal place, this is just 9.8. So here we have an example about truncation. So the weight of a dog has been truncated to 402.3 ounces to one decimal place. And we have to work out the interval within which W, the weight of the dog, lies. So if it's 402.3 and it's been truncated to one decimal place, then this could be 402.3 anything. Uh, and then they've just cut off after the three and just ignored everything else. So we've truncated to one decimal place to get this value. So that means that the smallest value that this could be is just 402.3. Uh, seeing as though if you truncate this to one decimal place, you still end up with 402.3. Uh, anything less than this would be truncated to 402.2. So uh, this is the smallest value. So we put W in this interval here. And then the largest value this could be is going to be 402. Now we're not including the value of 402.4 here, so that's why we're using a strict inequality uh, to rule this out. So effectively, uh, this is the same as writing, it's less than or equal to, uh, sorry, 402, let me just redraw that, uh, 402.39 recurring. These two are effectively the same thing, uh, but we don't like using recurring decimals in inequalities if we don't have to. Uh, so we use, or we express the interval like this. If you want to get some practice in with error interval questions, you can do so with our online exam. This is available through our revision platform, and here you'll find loads of different questions to have a go at. There's a variety of different question types as well, and you'll get instant feedback on each and every one of them. 
So it's a really good way of keeping track of where your areas of weaknesses are, where your strengths are and how you can improve your exams. So if this is something you're interested in, you can click the link below and it will take you straight there.